Momentum is a funny thing. Defined as strength gained through a series of events. Enough bodies in motion, and we have more than just momentum. This is a movement. One where people come first, where digital is used for good. Here, innovation is contagious. Help is a call away, and collaboration is all we know. We are at home in motion. At home, in Luxembourg. At our best, together. Digital Luxembourg. It's not about technology's potential. It's about yours. Gentlemen, um, I hope you're having a wonderful Arch Summit. Um, we're sort of coming into the final run now where we're going to be doing our, our final and we've got our, all our judges ready to go. But before we do that, I'd really like to introduce you to the Prime Minister of Luxembourg who's going to say a few words. So please uh, make a warm welcome to Xavier Bedel. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, innovators, investors, sharks, dragons, <laughs> even a Nobel Prize winner, welcome to the Arch Summit and welcome to Luxembourg. I met some people just to start to be uh, very polite who told me it was the first time they visit Luxembourg. Firstly, I hope it's not the last one. And Luxembourg is bigger than these two holes where you have this arched summit. <laughs> so take your time to visit a city where, it's this, I'm sorry to make an, to start with a love declaration to my country. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm proud to be a prime minister of a country where we are in the middle of Europe. Nearly 70, over 70% 70 of the populations of the city are non-Luxembourgers. Nearly half of the population of my country are non-nationals. And we had elections a few months ago. And when I see the rise of populism, of extreme right parties in Europe, and also around the world, I'm proud to say that we have no member of our parliament coming from an extreme right party. And so feel welcome in this country. <laughs> And I remember last year when we arrived here, we were all excited because we didn't know what was going to happen and what to expect. I have to tell you that this year I was even more excited than last year because I knew exactly what to expect. Today's with the power to change the tra trajectory of the years ahead. I started to my speech with being open. And to be open, is what we need also here, to be able to exchange. Because uh, every great collaboration begins with a conversation. And even if it seems easy to say, yes, we need to speak, it's not always easy to do. And so platforms like this here is very important to be able to exchange. When I say that, that for all of us it seems so easy to speak and to understand each other, I just want to remind you what's happening in Westminster the last weeks. <laughs> so, just to tell you, I, I respect the choice of our still UK family members. But I regret it. And sorry to tell you also that, because some of you are not from Europe. And just to tell you that, I belong to a convinced European, and I really regret that the country is going to leave my family. It's the first time. And since 57, Treaty of Rome, we were able to have countries around the table, Germany and France, who were in a war less than 15 years before. In a war situation, 
and we were able to make the biggest peace project existing in the world. And if I look, I told you about this cosmopolitan country. If I look, my grandmother, she's from Russia. My grandmother is from Russia, she was Orthodox. My grandfather from my mother's side was Polish, he was Jew. From my father's side, my grandfather was from Luxembourg, he was Catholic. And my grandmother from my father's side was French and she was atheist. <laughs> and I'm married to a Belgian husband. That's Europe. Because even here, even here, before we had this project of the European Union, I wouldn't be able to stand free in front of you. Having Jewish blood, being gay, was even sentenced to death. And since 57, we were able to get these rights, what we consider for granted today, to express freely, to live our life how we think it should be, to move, to work, to be sick, to be defended, to study in 28 countries. And nothing is granted. And we should not forget how lucky we are to be here. Because at the border of this Europe, in Ukraine, we have still a war situation. I had last week a discussion with the president, the ex-president of Kosovo. They, it was on our continent that ex-Yugoslavia had a war. And that's not 200 years ago, 20 years ago. And I had a few weeks ago a meeting in Egypt where the president of Sisi asked me to be more, asked us, all the colleagues, to be more tolerant through religions and through ethnicity. And I told him too that we should be more tolerant for women. We should be more tolerant to opinions. It's not because you have a different opinion that you have to share it, but at least respect it. And to sexual orientation. I told that. And believe me, I was so surprised about how viral this speech went. Because what I said for me was fully normal. But so we still have a lot of work to consider that what one of you might consider as normal is sometimes not normal even for your neighbor in your own country. So we have to fight for values. And we have to be able to exchange. We have to be able to be proud of our past, that we should be proud also of our present, and also ready for the future. And when I look in this room, I see a room full of, of innovative, energetic minds. I believe that your attendance also here, your openness to building relationship, sharing ideas, is proof of a bright future, and of this open society that I want. As this year's Arch Summit has highlighted, we cannot talk also about technology without talking about people. The success of our modern society relies on aligning what we can do with who we want to be. Every new innovation is a vote for the world we want also to create, for the values we uphold, and as our capabilities grow, so does the importance also of our decisions. As the leaders of a country capable of infinite innovation, it's our job to not only fuel it, but also to steer it. We are a government that favors actions of our words, despite the fact that I'm up here today doing a lot of talking, but that's also part of my job. I was a lawyer before, so I know how it goes. <laughs> Based on collaboration, and community-wide discussions here, just a few of the steps we have taken to fuel positive progresses so far. We've brought high-speed broadband to four out of five households. We operate our own high-performance computers in Luxembourg and help build a European network of HPC. We've been a strong supporter of free trade in Europe and we keep pushing for digital single market. Is it normal that today if you want to be successful in Europe, you have to fulfill 27, 28 till now, but soon 27, regulations, 27 
single regulation. We need this digital single market. And I've visited some companies from America, from China. I want my continent also on this map and not squeezed between other continents because we are not able to have this digital single market which is more important now than ever. We have completely reinvented and enhanced our financial sector, turning it into a global fintech hub. Talents. More than ever, we need brains and skills. We are well aware of that and have deployed a large number of e-skills programs targeting everyone. Children, employers, citizens of all ages and backgrounds, as well as job seekers or refugees, all part of our society. All part of our society. I told you, citizens of all ages. So from school, to, she will, won't be happy, but to my mom. Refugees. Really a society where everybody is a part of it. Also, we have built an innovation-friendly environment and stimulated the growth of our buzzing startup scene. It may sound like I'm bragging because I'm, I'm proud of what we've accomplished together as Digital Luxembourg, but we still have more to do. The development of our digital public services and data-driven policymaking are just some of our priorities. We recently launched our national 5G roadmap and are helping lead the way in making the 5G also a reality. We will soon introduce a national AI strategy. We'll focus on people because we believe that it's, on, it's not about technology. It's about you. As a government, we understand that technology moves at a fast pace. That is why, as I've said before, I insisted on being directly in charge of our nation's digitalization strategy. Our administration works closely in, with innovators to make sure they get what they need quickly, the survival, and Luxembourg's progresses depend on it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your creative energy and innovations are essential to who we are as a nation. We are here to support you. And I don't know if you've seen the country slogan when you, if you arrive by plane or by train. The slogan is, make things happen. This was always the position of my country. Being in the middle of bigger countries, being on the crossroad of Europe. And maybe if you did not visit the city already, this country was a fortress. This country was a castle. Not this country, but the city was a castle. And tr through the Treaty of London, to get our independence, we had to open the castle. So believe me, in this country where I told you half of the population are non-Luxembourgers, where we changed bills to make it easier for women to have a job and to have a family, where we encourage father to take time to take care of the children too, where we support where we will have free public transportation soon next year, where we separated in the last five years church and state. is a country where we decided two centuries ago to take walls away. So be careful about politicians who want to build walls. Thank you.